Welcome to Balance Boldly, the podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I am Nikita Thigpen, your host and balance and relationship advisor, partnering with you to change the narrative so we can amplify your intimacy within all of your relationships and you can have the freedom, flexibility, and confidence to thrive in work, life, and love. My personal mission for this and every episode of the Balance Goalie Podcast is to serve you well with the tools you need for moving beyond just barely surviving the burnout of work and life over those narrow hills of imposter syndrome and through the barriers preventing you from being and doing greater. It's why I am so thrilled to be in the core of season 13 with you. For all of you who have been listening, the bold and the brave, I am so grateful for your time, your energy, your space to sit with us. And that's why we are going in to Mindset Matters. And I have another mindset expert here today. So excited. This woman and I have met in what I would consider unconditional ways because she was like, I am bold and I am brave and I'm just going to reach out, see what it is, tell this woman how awesome I am and see if I can be on the podcast. And guess what I said? Yes, yes, of course. So that's exactly what we're doing today. I am just getting the opportunity to meet her literally moments before we decided to record this conversation on air. And I have to admit, I would absolutely invite this woman into my personal kitchen. Her name is Deanna Deacon. She's a spiritual personal trainer and modern day goddess with a twist. She teaches strong, successful women to lead with their feminine energy, which I love so much. So to make sure that they experience deep joy and fulfillment while maintaining high levels of sustainable growth and prosperity, which we all know is extremely important. Through her mindset, alchemy, energy healing, and an ability to get even the most stubborn-headed woman laughing, dancing, and believing in themselves, Deanna's coaching ignites, inspires, and awakens your soul. Welcome, Deanna, to Balance Boldly. How are you today? Oh, I feel so great. Thank you, Nikita. It just feels incredible to be here with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, we are already high vibing and laughing and Mm -hmm. being silly. (laughs) (laughs) We've got to know each other very quickly in a few minutes. (laughs) I know. And I guess we should, uh, you know, record the conversation so other people can be a part of the insider jokes that we've been creating on the back end. (laughs) So I'm excited that you're here. Thank you. Thank you again. I would love for everyone to have an opportunity to know from you how you got to be a goddess with a modern day twist. Like, how did you come to this space you're in, especially in the coaching world when we separate the heart and head so strategically? Like, how did you arrive where you are today? Um, It started for many, like for many of us, many years ago, I was at the age of 19 and uh, a very ripe age of learning who I am, how I want to show up in the world, how I chose to interact with others and what experiences I wanted to have. And I went through the experience of losing my mom, who was my very, she was, she was my best friend and my mentor and my, yeah, very important to me. And unfortunately she had a battle with cancer and she ended up losing her life Mm. at that moment when I witnessed that, that's when I realized we can't sit back and let life happen. We have to live life on our terms. We can't wait for retirement. We can't wait for vacation in a few months. We can't wait for anything. We have to live now. And so that's what really instigated me and my personal journey towards what does it mean to be happy and what does it mean to feel fulfilled and what does it mean to experience joy even through the challenges? That's what I, I, everything I do, I attribute to my mom and, and I feel that she is always with me and her energy and her teachings and her lessons and her love is always riding with me as I go through this incredible journey of life. Yeah. I mean, that's first, let me say, I'm so sorry that you lost her physically, you know, here. Mm-hmm. And I know that your love permeates through mm-hmm. the ether and so does hers for you. And I know that it's still been tough to not have your mom kind of guide you through a lot of the adult things that we don't think we'll need our parents for until we realize. <laughs> yeah, until that moment comes. <laughs> exactly, until that moment comes. Um, I have to ask you, how did you move from that space of grieving into this flourishing space that you are now where you've accepted that your life will be as it is and you can create even more goodness along the way? Mm, Yeah, well, I'd like to say that I realized that immediately. And uh, the answer is that I did not. (laughs) (laughs) I was 19. So I went through um, quite a beautiful phase of exploration and um, 
uh, just doing a lot of things that were probably not very good for me. Spent a lot of time in relationships that were not healthy or healing. Spent a lot of time exploring alcohol and partying. And I went to university, but I just really interacted with a lot of the things that you do in your early 20s. But I did so from a place of, of deep pain. And I, I, and I would thought that I had moved through the grieving process, but I had never, ever experienced anything like that nor did the society that I grew up in teach me how to deal with those emotions. And I personally am a very emotional, very sensitive, very empathic individual, which was not accepted. And so no one was there to support me as to how to work with this, what to do with it. So I went through um, probably about almost 10 years of really breaking down <laughs> over and over and over and over and over again. And what I found from that was that I Every time that I broke down emotionally or mentally, I also broke down physically. And that's what really helped me start to realize. And, and I used to be, I still am, but I, I started as a personal trainer thinking, okay, this is what's going to help my body feel better. And that's when I started to really tap into the connection between our physical body and our mind and our emotions. And it was around sort of my late 20s that I started to come a little bit more at peace with the fact that my mom was gone physically and came into this place of, hang on, how can I create more healing within my mind and my emotions in order to then show up in my physical body? And this is when I really started playing with that. And I really started diving deeper into nutrition, into holistic health, into mindset, into meditation, into all of the ways that I could take control and surrender at the same time with my physical and emotional experience. So it was probably around my late 20s when I really started tapping into this world that I am much more deeply involved in now. Yeah, I mean, that's powerful. You said you had layers of power that you just unveiled in that. And just to, to kind of back up and highlight some of those layers for everyone who's listening, because I know you guys, as ambitious women and brave men that you are, you're probably multitasking. <laughs> and there's, it's very easy for some of those really good golden nuggets to fall to the ground because you're multitasking. And I just want to point out that you said over the layers that you allowed yourself to have that beautiful face and that, that expression of that beautiful mess that you were <laughs> in to, to be in that. And sometimes that's what we need to do instead of trying to rush past it, to deny that it's occurring, is to just allow whatever needs to be messy to happen. Like, okay, you're, you're cooking, you're making a big dinner. It's going to get messy. <laughs> Right, right. Like just allow the mess to happen. And so that whatever it is, that is the overall outcome of whatever beautiful dish that you're creating can occur instead of being so overly zealous about clean up, clean up, clean up. Not that you can't clean up a little along the way. You don't want to be, you don't want to destroy your kitchen in the process of, you know, creating something wonderful for whoever you're making it for. But you do want to make sure that you're really focused on the overall Thing that's occurring and in your case it was just allowing you to fill the fills you had to fill the fills of the loss of your mom and every other thing that was probably unraveling because of that energy that was spiraling out of control which i know is a little higher level for probably some of the people that we have here that may not understand um, how much energy affects you and the capacity of it but they do understand to you know from the emails and texts and messages that i get from our listeners they understand a little bit about what it is to be an empath, but they may not understand that being an empath has a different level of burnout to it if you're not careful, right? Yes, absolutely. And that was a, a very interesting lesson that I learned firsthand. Like I said, I didn't necessarily have any support in my life of individuals who understood even, I didn't even know what an empath was until I started exploring why am I so sensitive? Why am I not able to watch scary movies? Why <laughs> is it that when other people are arguing that I'm feeling sensitive and, and, un, and insecure about it? And, and why is it that when I step into situations where other people are really strongly in their masculine energy, their strength, and they're, they're pushing things forward, that it caused me to come a little bit more quieter, a little bit more internal it wasn't until I started exploring that and how the empathic aspect of myself and the energy that I was picking up on, it wasn't until I explored that, that I really started to embody what it means to be a strong, empowered leader. Yes, yes. yes. I love your example. Uh, my husband would tease me forever. We've been you know, friends since 13 and a half, together since 17, and he cannot stand the fact that I was such a, you know, a weak person around scary movies, he'd be like, what is wrong with you? Like, what is your, 
the toughest woman I know, but she can't watch, watch this scary movie. I'm like, yeah, you don't understand. I feel everything that's happening. Yes. And, I, and I would tell, not the corny, you know, Freddy Cougar, scary, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that. We clearly know that's catch up, up <laughs> that not even done well. Like not those, like those type of things didn't bother me, but things that were meant to be as realistic as possible. I could feel someone being stabbed. I could feel a woman being raped on screen. I could feel all of those things. And he didn't understand that um, beyond the level of, you know, he knows that I'm a multiple abuse survivor. He knew that part, but some of the other things he was just like, I don't get what is wrong with you. And I'm like, no, I'm not watching that. Let me know when you're done. I'll come downstairs or I'll join you. I'll come back from my walk. Like I'm not watching that, but uh, that's usually one of the first signs for anyone who's listening to us right now. Understand that if you're one of those people that feel extra sensitive and you can't, you feel like it's for no reason, there may be something more to that energetically. And there's, there are things you have to do to protect your energy, but there are also things you have to do to avoid being burned out and drained by people, places, and things that are zapping you from that, like allowing yourself to be in movie theaters or in front of TVs or documentaries, even real stories that are just draining you because you haven't filled up your cup, so to speak, before you watch them. So just be very mindful of that. And even to keep even just watching the news for a lot of empaths becomes mm, so yeah. overwhelming because it just really drops your vibration and it causes you to think about all the negativity that's occurring in the world, which there is a lot of, and it's not about disregarding it all, but right. it, it, it's important to keep yourself in that higher vibration so that you can stay within the love aspect of yourself. So the work that you're doing in your career or your business or whatever, or just to, even in your family, mm -hmm. so that you can stay embodied in the essence of love. And that is what is going to bring deeper healing to all around us. Excellent. So speaking of, cause you know, you and I vibe together in energy and love and peace and joy and abundance and enlightenment and God consciousness. And as we go up, like, you know, we have tools to get there. But I know a lot of what you do with teaching other people is how to embrace the fact that you can transition that energy from, let's say you, were, you know, you had to watch the news. Maybe the news just was in the background of work and there was nothing you could do about it. You don't control the, the remote control, but you felt your energy going down. What are some of the things that either you use yourself or you use with your clients to help them move from that one energetic level to another so they can transition out of that? darker space? Mm, yes, this is a great question. I, feel like <laughs> I, I could speak for a full hour on all this, but I'll just, I'll just try to bring it into a few golden nuggets. Right. right. <laughs> the number one thing that I think is really important, especially for those of you who are listening, who are very ambitious and very um, strong-willed and want to make changes occur in your business and in your life and in the world in general, if you find yourself in a low vibrational place, if you find that something has triggered you and caused you to feel angry or kind of like in that state of like, oh, this is unjust, this isn't right, this, this makes me upset, instead of just suppressing that emotion, acknowledge it because that is a place that you are passionate. There is something within that that has triggered this aspect of you and your personality and your soul so that you can take action towards it. So the first step is to acknowledge that you feel triggered. And the next step is just to surrender. So to ask, how, please God, show me, how can I make a difference in this area? How can I show up in service for this, this situation that triggers me? How can I use my personal gifts to make a difference? And that could be, you may receive guidance that it's simply bringing a group of people together to have conversation. It could be that you are now going to teach your children about this concept and, and why it, it is unjust and why you are sharing that with them. It could be any capacity, but allowing yourself to surrender into what is your way of being of service within the aspect that triggered you. And by even just offering up that prayer, it will help you to shift from that anger, from that frustration and begin to move into solution that is being beautifully guided that is going to make the biggest difference i love that it, it also opens you to gratitude right like you're being grateful for your connection with god in the first place to even be able to feel trusting enough to receive the solutions delivered to you and which whichever way he'll give them to you right yes whatever way you're ready to receive them at that point too and the other thing that is very important, especially if, as we are talking about this empathic element, if you're kind of intrigued by this and thinking, well, I don't know, maybe I feel a little bit like that. Or even if you're not, this is, this is the fact for everybody. Some people are just more sensitive. Energy occurs in our body. Our bodies are made up of energy. You can research it on YouTube and Google and you'll find the information. <laughs> we are made of energy. Yes. And when we do not allow ourselves to release 
different types of energy. So release emotions, release frustration, release anger, release sadness, allow this to be a part of our experience. When we don't release it, it stays stuck in our energetic body. So it stays somewhere in our body. I believe that when we have stuck energy, it then causes dis-ease which is disease, which causes mm -hmm. physical ailments, which causes physical pain. Yes. So in order for us to make sure that on a day-to-day -day basis, we are not keeping stuck energy in our bodies, we have to experience energy release techniques. So there are a million different ways that you can do it, but I'm going to give you one because I know that you only have capacity to take on one new thing right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So when you feel yourself a little bit overwhelmed, when you're overwhelmed with the amount of work you have to do, or you just had to have a really um, uncomfortable conversation, maybe with a staff member, maybe with your partner, whatever it might be, something is feeling a bit ugh, inside of you. I want you to take an opportunity in, in private, maybe you go to the bathroom, maybe you go somewhere where no one else is going to think you're crazy. And you just start pounding your feet on the ground. You literally start pounding, 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 pounding so that the energy that's occurring in your body can now begin to release down to the earth. You pound, pound, pound. Maybe you start shaking your wrists. You shake your hands. You shake your body. You let everything start to go. Literally just let it go. You'll look crazy. It's okay. Just do it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it until you feel yourself come to a sense of calm. Yeah. When you come to the sense of calm, that's when you come into that place of gratitude. You speak kind, loving words to yourself. You say, thank you to God for this experience you're having. You say, thank you to yourself for being able to release. You say, thank you for the life that you live. You just bring yourself into deep, deep gratitude. And from there, I can 100% guarantee you have just shifted your vibration and released some stagnant energy that is going to help keep you healthy and allow you to live a sustainable, fulfilling life. Woo! Mm -hmm. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. That is a really good way to release the energy. And for those of you, a lot of, you know, we have a lot of chemists and pharmacists and scientists that are here. We can also relate that to lymphatic drainage, right? Like that's, that's what you're doing is you're getting your, your lymphatic system pumping from a physical standpoint, but the energetic release of it is really what is the most powerful of it all. Um, and I love, I love, see your personal trainer side was like top of mind right there. You didn't even know that you were going to come to balance bully to, to Deanna with that <laughs> today. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell everyone, how do you give yourself permission to pause? Cause you know a lot about helping other people and you know, helpers are always helping, but we often, you know, overextend ourselves sometimes. So how do you just bring it into center for yourself? Hmm. I really allow my intuition to guide me. So I do everything in my life intuitively. So even reaching out to you, Nikita, was an intuitive step. I felt drawn. I came across you, you know, as you do on the internet, you come across someone and I started tapping in and listening and I was so mm, engaged and excited. And then I just ask, I constantly ask all day, what is the right next step for me? And for that moment, it was to reach out to you. And I can understand now why that was but I do everything very intuitively. So I make sure all day that I'm asking myself questions. What do I want to eat in this moment? What is my body feeling? Am I ready to work on this project or would I rather work on that project? Is it time for me to lay on my back on the floor and put my feet up because I'm feeling overwhelmed? What could I do instead of having that extra coffee? How can I allow myself just to be at peace right now? So by constantly asking questions, it creates space for my intuition to flow into me. And that intuition always guides me. And it's either go for a run and get some like high intensity exercise in or release, relax and be calm or just sit and read a nice book. It's just constantly tapping into what my intuition is here to share with me. I love that. This is probably the first permission to pause moment where someone actually reflected on the importance of being connected. Right. And I appreciate your honesty for that. And, you know, because you could have said, you know, bubble bath and candles and all the other, you know, glorious ways to, to do that. And it, of course, it wasn't without a share of, like you said, you know, sitting on the floor, putting your feet up in something tangible and physical. But I love that you reminded us all stay connected because your power is the, the greatest way to reach the highest power, right? By tapping into your own so you can really be connected. So I appreciate you for, mm. for your transparency in that. 
Absolutely. And I just think that especially for those of you who are listening, you have a lot on your plate. You're doing a lot of things. There's a lot in your calendar every single day. Staying connected means that it's not just you doing it. It means that you are supported, that you have an infinite level of energy that you can pull from at any time, as opposed to feeling like you are alone and you have to do everything yourself and everything is on your shoulders. Allow yourself to feel guided, allow yourself to feel supported, and that will create that massive shift for you so that it's more sustainable for the long term. Oh, yes, honey, you are speaking my language all <laughs> day long. I can't wait for our post recording conversation together <laughs> and vibe. I'm like super looking forward to it. So how can everyone who needs to, wants to, is drawn to connecting with you, how can they reach out? Absolutely. There are two key ways. Um, first, my, email, or my website is deannadeacon.com. And if you go there, somewhere on the front page, you can sign up for my email list. And from that, you receive a Root to Rise meditation. This is, I think it's about a 10-minute meditation. It's guided the entire time. So if you've never tried meditation before, don't worry. It's super simple and easy to follow along with. And it's really designed for individuals like yourself who are ambitious and bold and brave and who are really rooting into your purpose in life and then allowing yourself to rise like a tree, the trunk of the tree and the leaves and the branches reaching out so that you can be of service to others. So I really think that you're going to enjoy that meditation. So just go to deannadeacon.com and allow yourself to get that. You can just put it on your phone so you can listen to it at any point. If you, you know, after you do an energy release, you can easily just listen to that so that you can bring yourself back to a state of calm. Mm. And ah. Love that. Go ahead. No, share, share. The other places on Facebook, I love sharing personal stories, personal experiences, what's occurring in my life. I share a lot of photos of my cute little puppy dog, <laughs> um, but a lot of like what I'm going through personally and some of the, the personal struggles and challenges or the ways that I work through these challenges and struggles and different coaching techniques and things like that. So come find me on Facebook, either my business page is Deanna Deacon Coaching, or just come add me personally, Deanna Deacon, and let's have a, let's send me a message. Let's have a conversation and begin to connect. I love it. And I'm encouraging you all to connect. Deanna, thank you so much for carving out time over there in Canada. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so grateful, Nikita. Thank you for this opportunity. It's been so nice to connect with you and everybody who's listening. Oh, I appreciate and honor you so much. You're amazing. Mm, thank you. Oh, Balance Bowley listeners, was that not like, ugh? I know it was good for you because it was good for me. So if it was good for me, it had to be good for you because I am one of you. I am another ambitiously bold and brave woman who is always entrepreneurially connected to my spirit and thinking and doing and growing and sometimes taking on too much and having to use my own tools as well as reach out to my mentors, advisors, and coaches that guide me through the process for making sure that I stay centered and stay connected to the thing that pulls me forth. So I understand, I reflect, and I learn today. So Deanna, thank you again for your time and your energy and your resource by sharing your journey with us. We appreciate you. For all of you who have been listening and following for a while, make sure that if you loved what you heard, subscribe, rate, and share with the other people in your circles so we can ensure that those other ambitiously bold and brave people have access to these valuable life, love, and business balance tools. Of course, you can always connect with me, Nikita Figpin, at Ask Nikita. IG, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is, is your jam. I will say that if you direct message me on IG, I am quickest to respond there because my daughter is putting me on, you know, the teenager is showing me a few things. So I'm learning and growing. I'm learning and growing, you know, after 40, you know, things get interesting. So go create your balance, create your joy, but remember to do it boldly. Thank you for listening.